Duke Shannon. Advance, friend, and be recognized. I'd be glad to see your campfire tonight. Well, you're welcome to share it, friend. Must say you're mighty considerate, that horse. No choice. Busted the cinch on the saddle. Had to walk most of the way out of the Bitterweed Mountains. Then you'll be tired, I reckon. Hungry. All we got is beans and coffee, but half of it's yours. That's more than generous of you, Mr. Uh... Hobart. First name Malachi. No need to stand on ceremony while you starve. Smells like a real feast. I don't know how I can repay all this kindness. No need. You cast your bread upon the water, and after many days it will return to you. Oh, tenfold. All this world needs is a little more brotherly love and friendship. All right. You got yourself a friend, Mr. Hobart. Let's drink to that. There. That should hold it. Uh, thank you. That's uh, sure a lucky break for me, finding you camped here. You traveling far? Hard to say. I thought I might pass through the town of Sandstone, if it comes handy. You got friends there? I'll manage to find friends. Sandstone's bit off the beaten track. About four days hard riding, I'd say, in your wagon. I got plenty of time. All the time in the world. Well, I'll give you a piece of advice. Where the trail forks, take the road that goes north along the dry creek bed. Cuts off about 10 miles from the other way. I thank you. I will take your advice, friend. I wish there was more I could do to repay you. Ah, you just set your mind at ease about that, Duke, my boy. I was glad for your company. And as for the food, it was little enough. After all, we are all brothers under the sky. Children. And the Lord. You're all right, Malachi. A walking example of what you preach. Good deeds speak louder than words. Well, you haven't pried into my affairs the way I did into yours. I may have been making some guesses. Young man on the trail alone. Obviously been pushing through mighty hard country. And carrying a gun the way it says that he can use it. Some questions is better not asked. Well, I'm a better man for having met you. Thanks again. Your words are thanks enough. I hope we'll meet again, Duke. Bless you. You know, if I were Duke, I'd sure find time to ride into Eagleville. How come? Well, he knows a couple around there, and the wife knows how to cook a real good meal. Hmm. How about some more coffee, Mr. Chris? No, 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 thanks, Charlie. I don't feel up to it. Chris, Duke ought to be getting back pretty quick, shouldn't he? Well, it'll be a little while yet. My pass through the bitter weed range won't be too easy to scout. When he's through, he's going to pick us up where the trail passes Eagleville. You think that new pass will be any better than the old one? No use guessing. That's why I sent Duke out there, to find out. Anybody home? George! George? Martha? Hello, Duke. Good to see you again, Martha. When I rode up, the place looked deserted. How's George? He's all right now. Have you been sick? Where is he? He's dead. Drowned. He went catfishing up on Grizzly Creek. You know how he always liked a mess of catfish fried up in breadcrumbs. I remember. A storm came up all of a sudden. There was a flash flood. They found his boat five miles down the creek on a sandbar. And George? They never did find his body. I think that's what worried me most, Duke. 
You know, we always did want to be buried together down by the little fence on the corner. Where the lilacs bloom every spring. But I don't mind telling you that I don't know what I would have done if that preacher hadn't come to town when he did. He held the services? He did more than that, Duke. Far more. Duke, that man was a saint sent through God's mercy. What was his name? Malachi. Malachi Hobart. Oh, I wish you could have met him, Duke. That man has the sign of the Lord on him. Well, as a matter of fact, I... I don't mind telling you I was plenty worried after the first shock was over. You know, my George was a good man at heart. But he had his faults. Plenty of them. So have we all. But George had a few special problems. He was an awful close man with a penny. And he had a great weakness for the bottle. Oh, I know it doesn't do any good to speak ill of the dead. But the truth has to be faced. I knew him best, and I loved him most, so I can say it. George wasn't ready for the almighty judgment. And I knew it would take a powerful lot of mercy on the part of the Lord to save his soul from a good roasting. I was near out of my mind worrying about George's soul until that preacher came to town. He made me know that George is safe in heaven. And I know that as sure as I'm sitting here. Well, if I sit here any longer, we won't get any dinner. This Malachi Hobart must be quite a person. He's a miracle worker, Duke. Why, do you know, when he said his sermon in town, there wasn't a dry eye in that meeting hall. Do you know that he made a collection of almost a thousand dollars? In Eagleville? That's right. I went to Malachi and asked him about saying services for George. We didn't have any funeral, you know. There was nothing to bury. I told him how worried I was about George having a few sins. He said he would pray hard. He would talk directly to the Lord and ask him to be merciful towards him. I gladly gave Malachi my offering. Three hundred dollars that George and I had saved over the years. All of it? I would gladly give ten times as much. What price can you put on the difference between eternal happiness and damnation. Well, I guess if you put it that way. Do you mind if I say grace, Duke, before we eat? I never used to, but ever since Malachi came to town, why... Sure. Go ahead. You want me to get it? Don't bother. It's probably Sarah Gately. She and her husband always drop in after dinner to see if I need anything. It's really you. Huh? Who was she expecting? Not you. What's the matter with her? She's fainted. She's breathing all right. Pulse is good. Do you, do, you, do you want me to throw a little water on her? I wouldn't do that. I'll let her come around slow like. I'll carry her in on the couch. been here? Just since this afternoon. Where have you been? Oh, here and there. You know, Martha seemed to might surprise to see me. You might say that. Well, where did she think I was? In heaven. Now, she knows me better than that. She should, but she figured she bought your way through the pearly gates with $300. I was $300? That's right. But I ain't dead yet. Maybe you want to change your mind. It's crazy. How did I die? Drowned. The boat was swept away in a flash flood while you were catfishing. Oh, yeah, I remember now. Yeah. That's how it all started. Oh, what started? The celebration. I was celebrating not being killed. I kind of forgot after a few days. How come you weren't drowned? I nearly was drowned. 
I was going down for the third time, and then I felt this rope. My whole life streamed in front of my face. Never mind the dramatics. Just tell me what happened. Well, a, a, a fellow lassoed me and pulled me out. They pumped about a gallon of water out of me. Who's they? A g gang of trail hands out from Kenwood. They'd just been paid off, and their saddlebags were bulging. Well, they knew I was weak and shaky, and they, you know, gave me a little something to warm me up. So you went along with them? Well, by the time the world comes straight again, we were halfway to Laramie. Stopped at a little town. They got a few more bottles. I want to tell you, Duke, they were the nicest, most generous fellows you want to meet. You'd have liked them, Duke. I know you would. But what about Martha? Didn't you think of her just once through all this? Oh, sure. I couldn't forget Martha. I thought about her some most every day. How'd you think she was taking it? I figured she wasn't going to be too happy about it, but I figured she'd understand. See, I've, I've done this a couple of times since we've been married. Just straight off someplace. Leaving an overturned rowboat? Well, no, I kind of lost track of that side of the picture. Howdy, Martha. He's real, isn't he? He's real. He looks a lot older than I remember. And a lot dirtier, too. I don't think George is at his best right now, Martha. He was at his best in my memory when he was dead. And to think I paid $300 to see him in heaven. That was a very silly thing to do, Martha. Think of the years it took us to save that. Right now, I'd pay $300 more to see you and... Now, in... Martha, don't say anything you'll be sorry for. As far as the money goes, I think I can do something about getting it back for you. Oh, do you, Duke? How? Well, I met this Malachi Hobart fellow. He's on the trail to Sandstone. If I leave right now, I can catch up to him by tomorrow night. Gee, that'd be wonderful. We'd surely much oblige you, Duke. Martha, I'm sorry I can't make up for everything you've been through. But I promise you, I'll bring back your money. Uh, wouldn't it be better to leave in the morning? It's gonna be a dark night for riding, Duke. I'll manage. Good to have you back, George. Take care of yourself. I haven't had a chance to tell you how happy I am to be home, Martha. It's a miracle I'm alive. Let me tell you. Save it. I heard. You heard? You heard. Cut your throat. Duke, my boy. I'd hope to suit me did again. Yeah, I'll bet. How can you trust yourself with that razor? What do you mean, boy? I mean, you'd cut a throat for a dollar, wouldn't you? And my throat and I are old friends, Duke. I'm mighty careful of it. Besides, I abhor violence. So do I. So if you'll just get out the money, we won't have any. Now, the money is in the wagon, but there's mighty little of it, Duke. Hardly enough to make it worth your while. You took over a thousand dollars in Eagleville, including three hundred dollars for praying a man into heaven. I want that three hundred dollars. was hard-earned money, Duke. You don't know the job I had getting that sinner past the pearly gates. I ain't is so mean, miserable, no count. You knew him personally? No, not exactly. But his dear little widow told me all about him. Ooh, he was a bad one, Duke. But I see I didn't misjudge you. You're a smart one. You come by that information mighty fast. And you've done about what I expected. 
You expected this? Oh, you're getting the money from me easy enough. But some people resent being held up. And sooner or later, somebody's gonna fight back. You're gonna have to pull that gun. Before you know it, you'll be strung up for murder. Must I still be fleecing the feet with their blessing? Yeah, that's something to think about. Of course it is. Why should you rob me? Can't do you any good, and it won't do me any harm. I'll get more, just the way I got that. And what will you do? What are you getting at? Just this. I can teach you the secret. Duke, don't take people's money. Make them want to give it to you. I like you, Duke. I could do a lot for you. You really think so? Uh, if you don't mind my saying so right now, you're just a punk kid with a fast gun. Give up your evil ways. Follow in my footsteps. Well, think it over, Duke. I wished I'd had a son like you. I've needed a working partner for a long time. We can get rich together, Duke. I still don't quite figure how I fit into your preaching act. Preaching's only one of my talents. And any con works better with two men to make it look genuine. You got a good, honest face. Just the kind I need to help sell my gold finder. Gold finder? The greatest invention in the world, you'll see, is a little mining town about a day's ride from here. All right, friends, step right up here. Room for everybody to see the scientific miracle of the age. Get in close here, get down the front row, huh? Can't see it unless you get close. Let that gentleman through there. Come on now, get in here. Got to see this. What's going on here? It's me. Here it is. The genuine Hobart gold finder. <laughs> <laughs> this searches out the precious metal right out of the earth. Now, listen. Now, I'm willing to part with one, only one, of these precious instruments for the paltry sum of fifty dollars. <laughs> now, who's going to be the lucky man? I'll bid five cents with that there gold finding <laughs> I'll make it ten cents. <laughs> Isn't there a man of faith in this crowd of scoffers? One man who wants to make his fortune. Well, how's that thing work? I'm glad you asked that question, friend. The Hobart gold finder signals the presence of the precious metal like this. Now listen closely. You hear that ticking? You hear it? That is the signal that the precious metal is near. That tells you where to dig for your fortune. Now, who wants to be the lucky man? Well, it'd take a miracle to find any gold in them worked out digging. Yeah. 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 I'll buy it. Congratulations, young man. You're going to be horns, Morgan's son. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he? Scoffers, <laughs> unbelievers. <laughs> you just wait. You'll see. You'll see. You did fine, boy. Just fine. Tomorrow. We'll sell that gadget again for ten times the price. I don't see how. Because it works, boy. It works. Yeah. It found gold for you. Are they real? Of course they're real. This is part of my working capital. 
Yeah, I think your little strike's going to make quite an impression on our audience tomorrow, Duke. Don't you ever find it hard to get up in front of all those people and tell them all those lies? Well, it is hard sometimes. But every job has its hard moments. Besides, it ain't all lies. I tell people what they want to hear. I revive their faith in miracles. Hey, I do more good than harm. How can a phony gold finder do anybody any good? Well, who knows? The Lord works in mysterious ways, as the book says. I remember one time I sold some phony railroad right away. And the railroad really did come through there. I made a few people rich. Doesn't your conscience ever bother you? It used to sometimes, but since I took up preaching, so many people think so highly of me, my old conscience don't dare think otherwise. They wouldn't think so highly of you if they knew you were a fraud. Now, you listen to me, Duke. When I stand up in front of a crowd, I'm not a fraud. I am what they see in me. When a man knows the good word, can make them feel it in their dried up hearts. You understand? I am what they see in me. I give fair value for what I take. Even when you pray a man into heaven for $300? Yes, even then. Do you really believe that man's in heaven? Well, who can say? Who can say if there even is a heaven? I wish I knew. I sure do wish I knew. He found some gold with that gadget. Well, let's find out. He's trying to steal it. He sure is. I'll give you 55. 55? You're as cheap as he is. $100. $100. Now, that sounds more like it. $150. $150, gentlemen. $200. No, $200, he said. $250. $250. This man is going to be rich. Check it, $300. You are making your fortune, man. Well, now, come on. Let me hear some more. $355. $355, Mr. Dukes. $400. $400. This man is rich already. $450. That's better. Five hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred. Gone once. Five hundred and fifty. Five fifty. Make it six hundred. Six hundred dollars sold. For <laughs> Why, there ain't nothing in it but a cheap dollar alarm clock. Why, yeah. Yeah. Oh, get out of here. Get out of here. Say you didn't find gold? Go ahead! Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come riding after us? Oh, hell. Not for a long, long time. Hey. I always snarl up the hitch reins before starting the auction, just in case. What went wrong? Some unbeliever pulled the trigger on huh, stupid. Yeah, well, that's all part of the game. You can't win them all, son. I guess I should stick to preaching, spreading the good word. It's too bad it's such a long ride to the next flock of lost sheep. I heard in Eagleville that there's a wagon train on the trail just about a day's ride south of here. A wagon train? That's the most fertile ground of all for the sermon I got in mind. Sermon about you, Duke. Hey, get, get after! 
Maybe he ran into trouble. Doesn't look like his wagon. I'll go have a look. Right. Ah, hello there. Everything all right? Couldn't be better. Are you the wagon master? That's right. Chris Hale's the name. Well, I'm mighty pleased to meet you, Brother Hale. I'm Malachi Hobart, serf of the Lord. I wonder, might I fall in behind your train for a few days? I suppose. Where are you headed? Uh, wherever the Lord takes me. I'll take off on the trail to Sandstone. Pass. Well, that's about two days right away. I'd be grateful for the company. And I would like to pay my way, Brother Hale. Well, that won't be necessary. We're heading that way anyway. You won't be any extra trouble. Well, I'm very much obliged to you, Brother Hale. I have some simple remedies with me. Syrup for the croup, for the colic, things like that. I would like to make myself useful somehow. Well, we're all pretty healthy right now, but you can check up and down the train at the afternoon rest stop. I'll do that. Say, you suppose some of the folks would like to have a little service this evening, just ask the blessing of the Lord? Well, it's possible. I have nothing against it if you can find yourself a congregation. Well, I thank you, Brother Hale. You have a heavy burden on your shoulders. I'll ask the Lord's guidance for you. Thanks. I can use it. <laughs> you with me, Duke boy? I'm with you, Malachi. I feel this will be a most rewarding evening. <laughs> We're climbing up them golden stairs. How about one of my cold biscuits? Very fine, you know. Not unless you have a hammer and an anvil to soften it up on. Very funny. <laughs> Say, Mr. Chris, you gonna listen to that new preacher fellow tonight? That Malachi or whatever his name is? I might. I wouldn't miss it for anything in the world, not even a steak dinner with onion. I didn't know you went in with that sort of thing, Charlie. Well, this ain't no ordinary preacher, Mr. Chris. He's got the power on him. What a voice. I bet he'd have been a great singer if he hadn't got the call. Yeah. You know, Charlie, he only joined the train a few hours ago, and I've had about 15 people tell me what a saint he is. Can't everybody be wrong. You better come and hear the sermon. I do you some good, too. <laughs> yeah, I guess I better. I don't want to be the only one to miss it. All right. Friends! Hello! Everybody hates a long sermon. So tonight, I only want to talk to you as long as it'll take this candle to burn down. Ye are the light of the world. Men do not light a candle to put under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify Father in heaven. Some of you came here tonight to hear me, only out of curiosity. I know, but I know. You may have felt you weren't very religious, but I know you got the Lord in your heart. Well, if you didn't have faith in the great Almighty, 
You wouldn't be on this wagon train heading west to make a better life. It's a hard life you've chosen for yourself. Full of trials and sorrows. God sees you. He will reward you. He will give to you all things that are necessary, just as you give those less fortunate than you. Good, ain't he? Mighty good. Now, I am leaving this wagon train tomorrow to go into the wilderness to build a church to bring the word of the Lord to some lost and struggling souls. I will take with me renewed faith from all ye good people. For all things are possible to those that had faith. Now, how are you going to renew my faith? Let me talk to you about that for a moment. Now, before I ask you to give what little you can afford for the Lord's work, I want to show you a living example of what faith can accomplish. I want you all to see what your donations will make possible. A human soul brought back from the edge of destruction. When you all see this man, you'll know you're not just giving dollars to preach it but you're given lost soul back to the Lord. This man confronted me one night on the trail with a gun. He was willing to kill me for whatever I possess. And what sort of evil can bring a man to this state? Liquor, for one thing. He had too much of it for too long. It was a craving now. And loose women, they were part of it too. He had become a slave to his desire. But this man has been brought back to dignity and humanity through faith. This man is a living miracle. And it's just such miracles that will be made possible by your gifts tonight. I was the one who extended a helping hand to this soul lost in the depths of degradation. But it was people just like you that made this work possible. Now I want you all to see this lost soul, this, this drunkard and hold-up man who has been brought back into the fold. Come on out here, boy. Say a few words to these good people. Here he is. Why, it's Duke. <laughs> <laughs> Fake! We don't want his kind around here. A few seconds ago. Now that your pride's hurt, you act like mad dogs. All right. You were suckers, and this man's a fraud. But the God he talked about's up there just the same. He sees what you're doing. Are you all frauds? Or is there any Christian decency left in any of you? Maybe there's a line of scripture you all ought to remember. Judge not, that ye be not judged. Well, Duke, I'm a little surprised to see you here. I guess everybody was. You took quite a chance, but I guess you had your reasons. I figured Malachi had something to learn. It was a hard lesson. They... They might have killed me. Except for you two. They might have. They hated me. Their eyes despised me. Called me a fraud. Well, aren't you?
What's for breakfast, Charlie? I don't know. What does a reformed drunkard eat? <laughs> Wagon coming. Is that Bill driving? I don't know. Let's go see. How'd it go? Not so good. The doctor said there was nothing he could do. She... She may not live long enough to get home. What's the trouble? She's got a fever. The doctor gave me some medicine, but... he doesn't think it'll do any good. I'm obliged to you for your help, Mr. Hale. Now, if I can have my own team back, I'd like to get moving again. Well, there's no hurry now, is there? Why don't you have something to eat with us? No. No, thanks. Last time Leona was conscious, she said... She said she wanted to die in her own house. I'm going to try to... Bill, get Mr. Standish's team. Hook them up. Charlie will show you where they're grazing. Sure, Chris. Anything you need for the trip home? No, I reckon not. Might as well get this team out of the way. Who's that? That's Malachi Hobart, isn't it? That's him. Thank you, Lord. Brother Hobart, you've got to help me, please. Who are you? Don't you remember? Roy Standish. You remember my wife, Leona. You said she made the best biscuits and gravy west of the Mississippi. I remember. She's awful sick, Leona is. Please, you've got to help us, Brother Hobart. I'm afraid you don't understand the situation, Mr. Standish. I understand enough. I know that this man can work miracles. You sure you got the right man? Of course. I'd never forget him in a hundred years. Tell them what happened, Brother Hobart. Yeah. Tell us, Malachi. It was nothing. It was a miracle. Maybe you'd better tell us. Well, last spring, we, we had a drought. 38 days without rain. Right after planting time. The seed was dying in the ground. You know what this means? I know. Starvation, that's what it means. Or else pull up stakes and move on and lose everything you've been building for 10 years. But Malachi Hobart saved us. Mr. Standish. He's a modest man, a humble man. He won't claim any credit, but I know the facts. Malachi Hobart prayed for rain. And suddenly the heavens opened up and it did rain. And we had the best crop we ever harvested. Please, this is all in the past. It's God's own mercy that I found you today, Brother Hobart. Please, please see if you can't help, Leona. I know it's too much to ask, but... If it's the Lord's will that, that she has to die, at least you can comfort her last moments. You won't refuse us that. I know. I'll go and tell Leona you're here. I, I think I can make her understand. What about Standish? No, oh, I'm sorry for is that all you can say? Well, what more do you want of me? You got the $300. You've seen me humiliated. You want the hide torn off me in strips now? I'm not too concerned what happens to you, Malachi, but that man's wife's dying. Look, if not for my sake, then for his. Stall him off just for a few minutes till I can get out of here. What am I supposed to tell him, that the preacher ran out on his dying wife? Tell him the truth. I'm a fake, a nothing. I guess I always knew it. I just couldn't face it. As long as I could con the suckers, I could con myself. Now, I'd have been better off if you'd let him hang me. You think he'd believe us? You can make miracles. You made the rain come. That was a fluke coincidence. It had to rain sometime. You think you've had a hard time here? You haven't seen anything yet if you run out on that man. I've had a long night. Plenty of time to think. Too much time. It was bad enough when I was a fake preacher, as long as I had some faith in myself, if nothing else. Now, that's all gone. I'm empty. I've got nothing left in me to give. For all I know, there's a God watching me. 
I'm not going to make a mockery of him any longer. You told the truth. You are a fake. But you're not going to run out. You're going to give one more performance, and it's going to be the best one of your life. Brother Hobart. See you now. Yes, I'll see you. Fiona, Malachi Hobart's here. You remember Leona? Mrs. Standish, Leona. Pray for her, please. Could I have a few minutes alone? myself. I don't deserve anything. But these people believe in you, Lord. They believe so much they got me to believe in too. Well, well that's fine. The only trouble is they believe in me too. They think I can help them. I can't. I'm not saying this very clear. What I mean is nobody but you can help, Lord. Um, don't care what you do with me. But be merciful to her, Lord. This woman's life is in your hands. Not because I asked it, but because they believe in you, Lord. Amen. Think we did the right thing, Duke? What else could we do? Well, how is she? The fever's broken. She's asleep. You hear that? Asleep. Not unconscious, but asleep. She's going to get well. Malachi Hobart's worked another miracle. Where's Malachi now? I came to ask you. I just came from his wagon. He's not there. One of his horses is gone, too. Well, if he's left that, I might start believing in miracles myself. Ah, 
I'm kind of surprised to see you again. I had to be sure of something. I might have misjudged you, Malachi. Uh, I think not. Not the way I misjudge you, anyhow. You didn't make much of a prize convert. What about your wagon and outfit? I better tell Hale, give it to old man Beardsley. His wagon will never make it over the mountains. What about these? That's the stuff I got from the people at Eaglesville. You better give it back to them. Tell them to build a school with it. What about the papers? This one says, Malachi Hobart is the official land agent authorized to buy right of way for the Great Western Railroad. Oh, no. no. I won't need that ever again. I'm glad to hear it. What will you do now? The Lord will provide. After all, anything is possible for a man who has faith. Thank you.